this video quickly to reply uh, about your statement that the property line is correct. Um, I believe it is not. I believe that the auto museum did in fact encroach on the public access easement that was granted to the city. So let me explain how I did this. Um, this is a map of the parcel from the Washoe County Assessor. As you can see here, the property line extends out into the river, almost to the point at which the what's called the high water mark uh, would hit. So uh, this line is where the property ends because this is where the high water mark is. And it extends out to the edge of the sidewalk and continues down Lake Street. Additionally, if you continue eastward, you can see that this high water mark line also extends out to uh, what used to be the Siena Casino Hotel. I forgot what they called it these days. Renaissance. So um, there is one mistake on the uh, map that they have here where they say that the Cochrane Ditch goes underneath the building. That is not correct. The Cochrane Ditch, ditch actually goes out and extends out underneath the bike path right here where this manhole cover is. You can see, hopefully, let me zoom in real deep so that you can see what I'm talking about. There is a manhole cover that's above, maybe like two or three inches above the ground, okay? That's the assessor satellite map. Now let me show you the parcel map that goes along with this. So this is the assessor map for this area for the arrangement of riverfront lots 53 through 69 for the Reno town site. Uh, this is part of the downtown river walk. And so here you can see a more accurate depiction of where the Cochrane ditch goes underneath subterranean and comes over this way. The bike path, 20 foot public access and bicycle path easement and the Cochrane ditch share an area here. And then the Cochrane ditch starts going out underneath the parking lot for the Audi museum and then goes underneath museum drive. The easement, however, continues directly on uh, parallel with the high water mark, which marks out the edges of this uh, property, which belongs to the auto museum. I am going to superimpose the satellite view along with the assessor's parcel map view. So what you're looking at here is both combined, they are not perfect right here. In fact, I am going to comp I'm going to correct this right now while you're watching because one minute later. Okay, there we go. And let me extend this out here. You can see that the auto museum property extends beyond the bike path and it extends to the high water mark down this steep cliff. And you can also see that the very top edge of the bike path is what is currently being used and that the auto museum's fence and building and everything encroaches halfway into this bike path. So this is not accurate right here. I have to fix this up again. You see that the point I'm trying to make is that <laughs> even if it's not dead on accurate with my lines, it's still one minute later. There we go. Okay, perfect. And now this bottom part is not accurate. <laughs> okay, but this top line here is directly where it needs to be. I'm going to draw on top of this. I already have one called easement, but that's now going to be out of sync because I just redrew this. So you can see this open area here that was made right after they made the fence, but not yet having made their pavilion. So I'm going to try to make this accurate. So there's uh, I think there's a curve here in the pavement like so. And then it goes here and then it goes this way. Now this is going to be reversed, obviously, because it's not. OK, now it's fixing itself up. You can see what I'm doing, right? I'm going along the edge of the bikeway that I can see eyeballing it where you know, what's left of it, what has eroded. Uh, okay. It's, I don't know. Would it be accurate to say that this is good enough for government work? Ha 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 ha. Okay. I'm going to keep on going down here. I'm not the government. I have to be more accurate than them. 
So right along here is where the bike path is. And it continues on this way, okay, um, to the next property. So I'm going to stop there, but now I'm going to, first of all, I have to make this uh, opacity about 50% so I can see what I'm doing. Actually, now I'm just going to take out the fill for now until I get this line done. One minute later. There we go. And I'm going to make this green. And I'm going to take away, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the border there. So this is the area that people can use to bike and walk. Now I'm going to put the assessor's map back here. And as you can see, the easement on the assessor's map goes well into where uh, it goes well beyond what is accessible. It does not go up into the cliff. The way that the city is thinking about making a retaining wall. I mean, they're using the most outer portion of that 20 foot easement. It's practically on the very edge. That means that since 1989, when the construction of the auto museum commenced, we're talking about this dumpster area here, this enclosure here, part of their parking lot, part of their building. All of this is public access easement. And now I'm going to take this the step further to show you. This is what a more recent view looks like. So, oh, I'm sw switching between here. So this is the Washoe County Assessor satellite view. And then this is a more recent view from Google Maps. So now you can see that they have built these pavers here for an outdoor pavilion. And they have like a little walkway that goes around this corner here. And this whole area is meant for holding private parties. And it is their property. However, if you put the... the assessor parcel tract map back on top of this, you can see that this entire area that they have decorated out with uh, landscaping belongs to the easement. And the building itself cuts out so that way people can walk underneath it. And then it goes clear into the driveway for their parking lot. All of this is public access easement that has been encroached on. So it's not the erosion that's the problem. It's the fact that the property owner encroached on the easement. So I need to show you this right here. This is from the Washoe County Assessor's office. I'm going to zoom in here. This is the uh, from 2016, late 2016, um, from it is the grant bargain and sale deed from the city of Reno, a Nevada municipal corporation and the redevelopment agency of the city of Reno, public body, corporate and politic. And, and okay, so this is basically and with the Hera Automobile Foundation. So at first it, it identifies who's who. The grantor is the redevelopment agency in the city of Reno and the grantee is Hera's Automus uh, Automobile Foundation. It says, uh, it's the first thing that it's talking about is the easement. Grantee, in other words, Harris Automo Automobile Foundation shall provide for all construction, maintenance, repair, and operation of the public access way and bicycle path at its own cost and expense. The National Auto Museum is who is supposed to pay for construction, maintenance, repair, and operation of the public access way and bicycle path. This includes, but is not limited to, all costs and expenses related to paving, lighting, landscaping, and related bicycle path improvements. So that's my first question. Why is Public Works paying for uh, fixing up, slurring, and building a retaining wall in this easement? They are not responsible for it. The Auto Museum is. On the second page, number two, Grantor reserves the right to review and approve all construction Improvement plans for the easement. Grantor. Who's the grantor? The city of Reno and the redevelopment agency. The city of Reno reserves the right to review and approve all construction and improvement plans for the easement. Such approval will not be unreasonably withheld. In other words, they have to make reasonable accommodation for the landowner, which is Harris Auto Museum Foundation, 
Grantor reserves, number three, Grantor reserves for itself, that's the city of Reno, reserves for itself and for its successors and assigns the right to modify the alignment, the grant and or configuration of the, of the bicycle path and related improvements if in the future the development of the Grantor's adjacent property makes such modification necessary or beneficial. <laughs> now what this means is that if uh, the auto museum changes things, then the grantor reserves the right to modify the alignment. Well, obviously, if the city is allowing <laughs> the auto museum to erect a fence and an outdoor pavilion halfway into the public access easement, obviously, there would have to be modifications to the alignment and the configuration of the bicycle path made for improvements in the future. So that's what they're currently looking at. Any such Modifications shall be made at grantor's own cost and expense and only upon approval by the grantee. Such approval will not be unreasonably withheld. Number four, grantee shall hold grantor its successors and assigns harmless and indemnified against any and all claims for losses or damages made by anyone for personal injury or property damage made as a direct result of the maintenance or use of the easement. So that means that the auto museum is responsible for any deaths that might happen from someone diving over a cliff because they put a fence halfway into a, a, a 20-foot wide easement next to an eroding cliffside. So you can see why I'm a little bit irritated about this. Neither the city nor the auto museum are abiding by the terms of this because the city's making improvements to this without permission from the auto museum, and the auto museum is not making any improvements to this th that benefit the easement. They're making improvements to it that benefit them, not the easement. They fenced it off. Now, the fact that there is only half of this currently being used is inconsequential. It is immaterial. The fact remains that they did not make improvements to the easement. They took away from the easement and their excuse was, well, the bike path is only this wide, so we're gonna build a fence so that way you can't build the other half of it if you wanted to. In other words, they prevented the city from making any improvements to it. So why are we talking about erosion when that's not the actual culprit? The culprit is that the auto museum encroached into the public access easement with a fence and a pavilion. That's what I'm upset about. And why are we looking, why, when I say we, I'm talking about the city, why is the city looking into chopping down trees and building a retaining wall to modify the alignment of this easement when all the auto museum has to do is push their fence back? I'm talking about from, I, obviously you can't push the, the, the uh, you cannot push back the building. That's, I'm not asking for anything unreasonable. What I'm talking about is this dotted line here, this dashed line, this needs to be abided by, and they're not doing it. So they have to push their fence back in this area from here. One minute later. There we go. That's how much they need to move their fence back in this portion here. And they can do it because all they have is an open pavilion with landscaping. It's definitely possible. So for the majority of the problem area, all they got to do is move their fence back. Now, what do you want to do over here? Well, there's a few options. First of all, over here, you could definitely make your pavilion smaller again. However, the closer that you get to this area, we have another problem, which is there is a concrete wall that was erected sometime. One minute later. Yep, there we go. So these two red areas, the fence would have to come down. That would be the best option. For this area here, well, originally... There was no fence. There is a concrete wall because there's a height difference. But remember, before 2017, the, in other words, this entire green area here allowed people to just randomly sit here like a little park. They closed off this park area here when they put the fence because homeless population went up. They decided to close off and fence off their area. And by doing so, they encroached into the public access easement. They did not abide by that agreement that they came into with uh, the, uh, the city of Reno. So they need to move their fence back. If this is to be fixed, we should not be going into the cliffside for two reasons. Number one, cost. 
way more expensive, needless cost permits messing with wildlife. There are, there's living creatures here beyond the trees. We have squirrels, we have beavers, we have all of this, you know, river life, right? This is the river. Why? Because it's a green belt, because it's a conservation area. We're supposed to be conserving, not destroying. That's the whole point. Now, do I want them to do this? Am, is this my personal, whoops, personal recommendation? I don't think it's even necessary to deal with all of this. Like I said, up here, we have the northern shore of the green belt. We have an open area that's been turned into a parking lot. We have a fence that goes here. We have this very irregular concrete wall that kind of does this weird shape thing. I don't know who the hell or why this was constructed this way, but this is how it was constructed, okay? Why don't we make an easement here? Why not continue the bike path on the northern side? It would make sense. Here's why. The existing bike path is right here. And then it ends here at the sidewalk because there's a stairway and you have to get off your bike. It also gets tighter. It goes from like 20 feet down to like maybe between, uh, I would say like six or seven feet wide. It's not too wide. And also I have observed that in this yellow area here is sagging down. If you take a ball and put it on top of here, it's going to roll toward the river. So I have a feeling that they need to do a little reinforcement on that. But what's my idea? My idea is to do this. When the Lake Street Bridge is replaced, which it is due for because it's too low and it's from the 1920s, it needs to be replaced. When this orange part here is replaced, then the bike path can extend across that bridge. One minute later. Some sort of a bridge to here or something, this would be where the Evans Street bike path would end. So the new hub or the new fork in the road or whatever you want to call it would be right here. So instead of dealing with this encroached area and this pavilion and this fence and ruining the habitat for, the, for this wildlife, or even better yet, you know what? I can, we could make it come back like, this maybe so that way it's completely out of the green belt area and this is next to the baseball stadium and you could connect the baseball stadium tourists directly up with the auto museum modify the parking lot a little bit i'm i'm open to you know to friendly amendments to the motion i don't want to just start taking over people's property because someone messed up at you know government and allowed them to erect a fence in a public access easement but it's getting back to the point of this video, it is clear that they erected their fence directly halfway into the easement. We're, we're encroaching on our uh, green belt in more areas than one. There's another area that's in Broadhead Park that was encroached upon not just the bike path, but the actual park, <laughs> which is miszoned. I, I have to show this to you. The, 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 this, this baffled me when I saw it. I was like, how the hell Broadhead Park was given, was made a park in the city in 1973. It was the first of many parks in with the establishment of the Greenbelt. Why is it zoned as mixed development for the Riverwalk rather than a park facility? It's a park. It's in the park and uh, recreations facilities list. But it's, it's it's zoned as mixed use downtown river riverwalk district that's that means that it's open for development and this property here encroached on it the the, the park used to come through here uh, it gets even better than that in a completely different area over here uh chrisley coughlin park this is i mean this has a parking lot facilities, a jungle gym, local resident access, and it has a bike path. Look what it's zoned as. SF3. What is SF3? Single family residential. Three units per acre. Are we really going to build a, a, a residential homes here in Chrisley Coughlin Park? I don't think so. I think someone's messing up.
it's either chaos or, or conspiracy. Either someone messed up or someone's planning something evil. Don't know, but that's Chris Lee Hoffman Park. So yeah, the, the, the area here that I'm talking about with all these uh, parcels that are being encroached on. Look at this. Broadhead Park, once again, mixed use downtown. Oh God, I lo lost my connection. The city of Sparks begins. All of their parks are listed as park facility all the way over to Vista Boulevard. I wish I could show you, but the damn thing is not loading. You'll have to check on your own. Yeah, okay, timed out. So it's so right now their server is rebooting. Anyway, you get the point. It's not just about erosion. The property line is not even in question. This goes through their property, but they encroached by half, creating a fence to keep homeless people out of their parking lot and what used to be a park area right here. It was an open green grass area. People used to be able to sit there and hang out with their bikes and read. It was a very open and inviting area. Now they're closing off the public from access. You have to access it through the auto parking lot. <laughs> so funny. Anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see what edits I can make to shorten this up a little bit.